yourself. Beginning today, your committee will consider two options for operating the state's $400 million liquor business. Governor Page has put forth his plan, and I am now introducing my plan. I want to be clear. We may disagree on our approaches, but I agree with the governor. Democrats agree with the governor. We must pay our bills and pay back hospitals. We can do that this session, and we must. I also agree with the governor's urgency. Now is the time to pay our hospitals, and our liquor business provides us the funds to do just that. But we must get the liquor contract right. We cannot rush to judgment, as was done in 2003. By getting the liquor contract right, we will ensure time and payment to our hospitals. Prior to 2003, the state operated the liquor business, and by all accounts, it was underperforming. Complaints about service, delivery, product selection were endless. And ongoing conversations, legislature occurred annually about privatizing the business. When the contract went out to bid, the value of the business was not well known. It was negotiated under pressure to fill a budgetary hole, and as a result, we did not capture the appropriate value for our asset, an asset owned by the people of the state of Maine. Today, we know the value of the business. Since then, the business has significantly increased in value. The number of agency stores have nearly doubled, and complaints are nearly non-existent. To be clear, as a Democrat, I believe strongly that there are many things that state government does better than the private sector, and more appropriately. But in this instance, history proves otherwise. <coughs> My proposal unequivocally keeps the management and operation of the state's wholesale liquor business in the private sector with the experts. It eliminates all financial risk to the taxpayer and incentivizes the private sector to partner with the state to grow the business. The governor plans to take back operation of liquor business, including the financial risk, in my opinion, while retaining the right to issue service contracts to administer the business. The differences are stark. The goals are hopefully the same. And it's now up to you and all of us to get it right. The specifics of my proposal, and I would encourage you to have both my bill as presented originally through the revisor's office, along with the amendment that I proposed today, so you can follow along. Despite the amendment being multiple pages, it's very straightforward and it's very simple. And I will talk about those sections as I go through it, Mr. Chairman. First, it retains the business within the private sector, eliminating all risk to the state and without adding any potential costs or positions to state government by issuing a new RFP on a strict timeline to have a contract awarded by July 15, 2013, this summer. And as a result, we're paying the hospitals by September 30th of this year, a date certain. Second, it mandates an open and transparent RFP bidding process that will ensure the best value bidder is qualified with the necessary financial, technical, management, operational, and marketing capacity, amongst other qualifications. The qualifications require the qualifications ensure service optimization and provide security to the state and its taxpayers because they will know that their asset, a $400 million asset, will be run with the experience and knowledge and the wherewithal how to perform. This is a very common bidding process accepted by the business community. Today, my brother runs a company that he and I started as teenagers. When he goes out, and bids on municipal snowplow contracts, towns have similar, rigorous requirements, obviously scaled down, in order to ensure the contractor can perform. In fact, they often require site visits to inspect his equipment and require financial assurances to minimize their risk. They want to make sure he can perform. Trust me, he's not bidding on $400 million contracts, but I would hate to think bidding qualifications to plow snow would be more rigorous than those for our state's $400 million business. I have met all of the bidders that are public today. In my opinion, and I want to be clear, I think everyone is qualified. I think everyone can run the business well for the state of Maine. 
They are impressive individual, individuals. They have many skills, many partners, and I believe they're in it for the best interest of the state, while at the same time operating their business in order to acquire a profit. They all know the current value of the business, because all that data is almost all public. And because of this, pencils will be sharpened, bids should be closed, and as a result, the state will receive the right and best value for our business. Third, my proposal provides two options on how to bid, either through one upfront payment or multiple upfront payments, all to be acquired by the state within the biennium. Both with additional annual payments growing over the length of the 10-year contract, along with sharing revenue with the state as the business grows. It is a partnership. Specifically, my amendment allows a bidder to choose between an initial payment of either $200 million to be paid no later than June 30th, 2014, or payments totaling $200 million to be paid no later than June 30th, 2015, with $100 million being paid for June 30th, 2014. Bidders will still be required to specify the amount of the guaranteed fixed annual payment, the formula for revenue sharing with the state during a life of contract, and the minimum profit margin, which they will define in order to be guaranteed to make their bid feasible. Fourth, and much to the understanding of many, this proposal allows prices to be lowered in order to compete with New Hampshire. But they must be lowered with respect to with respect to the structure of the contract awarded to the private business. Maine is a control state. We set the prices. We should not be allowed to lower prices below a level that undermines the terms of the deal for which we just shut sign on a dotted line and shook hands with our partner. Fifth, this bill corrects the long-standing inequity with our retail partners. The HC legislators, both in terms of price and hopefully in regards to return products. For too many years, agency liquor stores have received an inequitable return for their role as our partner. Floor space in stores is valuable. Return on investment is important, though. Just like with lottery sales, our partners do not receive fair and equitable compensation for running the system that we own. It lacks a proper incentive to help our overall business grow. And my bill makes this much needed course correction. My bill will raise an additional $6.1 million for our 488 liquor agents. It is not a promise, nor a commitment to fix and rulemaking. It will be the law. If adopted, it is a statutory and immediate legal commitment to the state. The governor's proposal guarantees no return, but to their credit, his administration has stated, and it's my understanding is working with certain liquor agents to address this through rulemaking. I've served on this committee before. And whether it is in this committee or in other committees across the legislature, we often hear about rulemaking and fixing things in the future. I have visited many liquor agency stores, whether as a consumer, whether in my travels seeking other products, or whether to speak specifically with these agents. It is time to fix this inequity, and we shouldn't trust rulemaking or future legislature to get it right. Now is the time. <coughs> Six, this, this bill creates a contingency for our state liquor stores and consumers. Too often our state has failed at properly administering RFP processes and as a result potentially jeopardized service as well as millions of dollars. And it's currently the case with the lottery services contract which is costing the state millions and millions due to the challenges. This has plagued many administrations. If the state is unable to get a new contract in place by July 1, 2014, only after a public hearing to make sure it is transparent, and a finding by the Commissioner of the Department of Administrative and Financial Services, he or she, after they have received a fair value of not less than $34 million, can extend the contract for only one year. A newspaper recently called this idea scary. I call it prudent planning. Seventh, my bill as amended approaches $100,000 appropriates $100,000 annually to the Department of Substance Abuse to help reduce underage drinking by funding the Enforcing the Underage Drinking Law Program, often referred as UDL. This program provides grants to agencies to lower underage 
drinking and increase enforcement to help eliminate the sale of alcohol to minors. I did not include language in my bill to further address enforcement. However, this committee needs to take on this issue. Now is the time. And that also applies to tackling substance abuse. The sale of liquor and substance abuse are directly connected, and as a control state, we must acknowledge the impact pricing have on consumption. You've recently spoke about this in this committee with Director Reed. In fact, our Director Jerry Reed, to his credit, acknowledged that this is a fa this fact in a recent presentation for you, and I quote, controlled jurisdictions are able to serve their citizens with a broader and more flexible range of policy options for promoting moderation in the consumption of alcohol beverages and minimizing incentives for predatory pricing that can and have led to alcohol abuse. I appreciate those comments. Those must be and should be always part of this conversation. Lastly, we as Democrats, Independents, Republicans, the governor, must use the upfront revenue we receive from the liquor contract to repay the hospitals. The Senate President and the Speaker of the House stated that this morning to the public at a press conference. But we also must consider paying this off and moving forward on reform at the same time. If you as a committee and we as a legislature do this right, our outstanding bill to Maine hospitals will be repaid by September 30th of this year under the watch of this legislature and this governor. Now is the time. We must put this debt behind us so that we can work together with the hospitals on reform, focus on improving and lowering the cost of health care, rather than working to pay off an old debt. This proposal guarantees payments to the hospitals without borrowing debt. And it won't borrow to pay off another debt. It avoids any constitutional uncertainty. It makes payment no later than September 30th. And as a result, saves $5 million on our reimbursement in comparison to the governor's plan. As well as saving over $40 million in interest costs, which would be accrued through the governor's plan of borrowing. It is a straightforward plan with zero risk to the taxpayer. No borrowing from Wall Street. It is fiscally responsible and sure way to pay back our hospitals. In my opinion, the governor's plan is risky. Constitutional questions remain unanswered. There's no timeline and it costs nearly $45 million more than our plan as a result of interest and fees borrowing and not paying off the debt before October 1st of this year. Earlier, the members of this committee asked the governor about the date in terms of which he seeks to pay off hospitals. I commend him for saying he wants to pay it off in 45 days. So do I, so do Democrats, and I believe almost the entire legislature. But I go forward based on the proposal that has been presented. And the proposal that has been presented keeps quoting a $186 million number that is owing to the hospitals. That is the money that is owing on October 1, 2014. The amount owing on October 1, 2013, this year, is $180 million. Let's save that $5 million. This proposal gets its job done without question and with certainty. Lastly, I would encourage this committee to think long and hard about funding other priorities in the state. With the annual payments that will still be available after any upfront payment. Personally, and I've shared this with Senator Flood, I support long-term efforts to fund water and sewer, roads and bridges, and his efforts. I personally believe that these needs need to be funded. But we also have to consider other priorities, such as education and health care. After we pay the hospitals, I believe we have the opportunity to support Senator Flood's efforts, along with making his investments in education and health care. This opportunity comes around once in every 10 years, and we must get the liquor contract right first so that we can pay and make investments in our future and pay the hospitals. This isn't about one party or one campaign. It's about getting it right and doing our job. It's about working with the government together so we can get the job done. Mr. Chairman, I'd be pleased to answer any questions that the committee